Welcome to the next chapter. In this chapter, we will talk about the basic concept of the encryption and decryption mechanism. Let's look at the four words. Data encapsulated based on the TCP IP protocol stack is transmitted in plain text over the internet, resulting in potential risk. For example, passwords and the bank account information may be stolen or tampered with and user's identities may be impersonate. After encryption and decryption technologies are applied on the network, transmitted data is protected and to reduce the risk of the information being leaked. Right? So now we know that uh, all the information that sent over the internet are not encrypted, they are in plain text. So this is the reason why we need to learn about the concept of uh, encryption and decryption. So let's look at the objective. Upon completion of this course, we will be able to describe the development of encryption and decryption technologies to describe the processes of various encryption and decryption methods and to understand the mechanism of encryption and decryption algorithm. So these are the three contents encryption technology developments, the mechanisms, and the common encryption decryption algorithm. So first of all, let's talk about cryptography. Cryptography is the conversion of plain text, which is, you know, the data to be hidden, into cipher text, which means unreadable information, using a mathematical method. Okay, so here you can see there's a formula, uh, which is, for example, C, which is the uh, cipher text, equals encrypted, and follow with the key and the plain text. So what's the function of the encryption technology? So the function of, of the encryption is mainly to provide confidentiality, so which means uh, we do not want our information, uh, the file that we send over, our password that we send over, over the internet can be easily being seen by anyone. Okay, so this is one of the main purpose. So uh, even though anyone that's in the, on the internet that able to tap into our traffic, they cannot reveal what is the actual content. Now the second reason is integrity. Now, integrity is also uh, the content which is being sent, claimed by uh, the sender, should be exactly the same as what the receiver will, should receive. No less or no more about the information, and no modification of the content in between the transmission. So as we can imagine, uh, data is transmitted over various tens of different routers before it reaches its destination. So we do not want the, des uh, the, the data uh, being tempered or being modified. Alright, so the next is non-repudiation. Now, non-repudiation means if the sender, if the data is being sent by a sender, so we do not want the sender to deny, say that hey, this information is not sent by me. It's, I, uh, my, my account has been hacked. Or maybe somebody uh, spoofed my account and sent on behalf. So this is called non-repudiation. So, so supposedly the function of this encryption technology can actually verify the sender's identity. Okay? And finally, authenticity. Now, authenticity is about authentication about a person. Okay, so we want to verify uh, a person, which is pro it probably will be the sender or maybe the receiver. So it's to able to perform authentication. So, for example, if you want to perform a, um, we, if you want to form a, a connectivity between, uh, uh, let's say, for example, uh, from a company. Uh, which is the headquarters and want to establish a connection with the uh, branches okay and the authentication is the one that's probably going to ask for username and the password 
okay so this is authentication so if nobody knows the username and password that somebody cannot access the resources right so let's look at the encryption technologies development so first we have the uh, sky taylor now sky taylor is in a <coughs> is that it's actually a tools or you can call it a patent used to perform the transition cipher transposition okay so it's, it actually consists of a cylinder with a stripe of parchment wound around it on a written message okay so it means it, it's, it's actually have a strip of a uh, something like a a cloth you know it's the cloth is written something and then it's actually wrapped around uh, the uh, uh, the, the so-called uh, the baton okay it's a cylinder baton so in the ancient Greek or maybe the Spartan the Spartans uh, in particular are said to have used the uh, cipher to communicate during the military campaign okay so this is actually the sky tailor now let's look at the second one is called the uh, caesar cipher now i think most of us are quite familiar with the caesar cipher also known as a caesar's cipher it's one of the simplest and the most widely encryption techniques it is a type of substitution cipher in which each letter in the plain text is replaced by a letter some fixed number of position down the alphabet so for example with a left shift of three okay so let's say we talk about a b c d e uh, if we a left shift of d so then um, d will be replaced by a okay and e will be replaced by b and so forth and so forth okay so if you want to read something you have to understand how many characters has been shifted towards left or towards right then only we can decipher the message so the next one is called real fence cipher now real set real fence cipher is a kind of a plain text which is written downwards and then diagonally on a success and on the successive rails of an imaginary fence then moving up and when the bottom reaches uh, when the bottom rails it reach so then you move up again and it move down so just imagine if you are it's like you're writing um, some kind of a cipher characters uh, on, 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 on a, a row of fence and then you write from up to down towards downwards diagonally and then go up all the way to the top and then go to the bottom and it become like a stream of messages okay so this is called the uh, real fence cipher now finally we have the uh, cipher machine which is actually it started to be begin popularity in the second world war when the german uh, nazi uh, they have something called the enigma uh, to perform the encryption of the of the text okay so these are the development of the encryption technologies so let's look at the mechanism of the encryption and decryption so first of all let's talk about the types of encryption technologies now first of all there are two types that primarily use uh, for the encryption method now the first method is called the uh, symmetric encryption it's also known as what we call shed key encryption so which means both parties will share the same key for encrypt and also to decrypt All right so this is the same key used for encryption and also for decryption and the second type is called the asymmetric encryption so two different keys are used for encryption and decryption okay and uh, typically this is also known as the public key infrastructure so each and every uh, party it could be the sender or it could be the receiver uh, they will actually first generate a pair of key is we, we call it the public key and also the private key now private key as the word suggests is a key where you do not expose and you do not share with anybody and private public key on the other hand is the key that can be uh, openly vis visible by anyone uh, over for example the internet 
So private key is for data protection and the public key is used by the user in the same system to check the validity of the information of the sender. So let's look at how it works on the symmetric encryption. So this is the sender, right? So step one, this is the plain text message and then go through a symmetric key. Uh, for example, a shared password. Okay, it can be any password and then it will perform the encryption algorithm and then it come up with the encrypted uh, message. And then this message will then send to the to the receiver. So for the receiver point of view, uh, let's assume that the receiver knows the same password or the same shared key. And so the receiver will use the key to decrypt and to receive the message. So this is simple. This is called symmetric. And the advantage of symmetric is actually pretty fast. Okay. Um, the second type is called the asymmetric. Okay, so let's just do a recap. Now public key bas basically means uh, it's a key which is visible to anyone in the public or you can say this public key is a key which we can share to anyone. So again, each and every user will first will generate a set of key, we call it a public and a private key. And these two values of the key are not the same. Okay. So for example, if sender would want to send something to uh, the receiver, so let's say receiver is Bob, and the sender here is Alice. So what Alice needs to do is to take the public key of Bob and to perform the encryption with the original message to become an encrypted uh, message. And then this message will then send over to Bob. So Bob, in order for Bob to decrypt the message, Bob can use its private key to the, uh, to decrypt and after that Bob can read the message so uh, and again the emphasize here is that public key and the private key are not the same value but it has to be generated at the same time uh, in order to have the uh, the uh, the algorithm to be able to uh, encrypt or decrypt so in this situation B uh, can read the message and without exposing his or her key now this method has a one big issue, okay, which is um, now anyone can just use Bob's key to send to, to Bob because here there's no uh, mention about who's the sender. So sometimes Bob could probably accidentally open up a, a virus, okay. So let's look at the, the comparison between symmetric and asymmetric encryption. Now symmetric encryption uh, the strength is actually fast encryption and also decryption. Why? Because they both share the same key. There is a concern about how to transmit the key. Okay, so how do you bring the key over to uh, your receiver to say that, hey, I'm using this key. I'm going to encrypt this and you're going to use that key to decrypt. Now, this is the problem because the key, again, as you send it over internet, your key has been exposed and then probably it will it might defeat the whole purpose now on the other hand asymmetric encryption the strength is actually a very high security in terms of the key because again we will never never expose our private key no matter what and only we expose the public key to our uh, to anyone okay so uh, the weakness is actually the encryption and the decryption are speed sensitive. So it takes time to perform the transmission of the, you know, the information, the key. So let's look at this uh, first concept of the the data encryption. We call this digital envelope. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, uh, Bob and the Alice uh, example. So let's say this is Alice and this is Bob. So let's look at step number one. So step one is. Um, Alice wants to send something to Bob, and so Alice will send the um, will actually will generate a symmetric key, uh, and also it will she will actually uh, encrypt the message into this message. Now the question is that how Alice are going to send over the symmetric key? So Alice uses this interesting method, which is okay. So first of all, step four is that. This symmetric key 
Well, then we use Bob's public key to encrypt the key. Okay, to encrypt the key to become this encrypted symmetric key. So, which means the key itself has been encrypted as well. And then these two messages will then be sent over to to Bob. So when Bob receives the key, first of all, Bob needs to de decrypt using his private key to decrypt what is the symmetric key, right? So after upon successful decryption, then Bob will then use the symmetric key value to perform a decryption, and therefore the original value will then be exposed, uh, can be readable by Bob. Okay, now again, this method is a very interesting method. It actually solves two problems, which is first of all, in terms of a uh, symmetric key has the advantages of to speed up the process of encryption and decryption. And also we solve the problem of how do we send the key over without being easily to be, uh, to expose the key. So, however, the problem is that the one I just mentioned before in the previous slide, which is how can Bob to be able to un, uh, to verify that the sender is actually is really from what Alice claimed. Now, because if you look at this, um, the whole process, there is no A key being involved, not not at all. So all this while is that A or Mr. C or maybe the cracker can also use Bob's public key to send to Bob. And Bob will say, oh, okay, it looks like it's from Alice, but in actually it could be from a, a cracker. Okay, so let's look at the another scenario, which is a lot more secure. So this is called the digital signature. Okay, um, okay so first of all, this is the original message. Okay, now first we're going to encrypt using Bob's public key to encrypt the message, okay? And afterwards, this message itself we then run through a hash algorithm. Now, what is a hash algorithm? Hash, hash algorithm is to come up, it's an algorithm to produce a, a value, the hash value, which is a very small value that actually represents the content of this information, a hash. Okay, and if if one of the, if one of the bits of this uh, content has changed, therefore the hash uh, value will also changes. Okay, so then this hash value will then be encrypted using okay. Guess what? Uses A's private key. Okay, now this time we're going to use uh, Alice private key to encrypt the hash. Okay. Now remember, hash value is something to, just to do some comparison because if somebody were to run through the same hash algorithm, which we will cover it later, like for example MD5 or CRC, then somebody will actually generate the exact same value as uh, from the original content. Okay. So this uh, hash will then be encrypted with users a private key, but to become we call it the digital signature. Okay. So this signature represents A is the one that signed. So after that, the message will then be sent over, and also the digital signature is sent over to uh, to to Bob. Now, first of all, when Bob received the uh, the message, Bob used uh, his own private key to open up. Why? Because earlier it was used public key, Bob's public key to encrypt. So Bob would use private key to open up the message. Okay, now the message can be successfully readable, but the question is that, mm, how about the, the sender? How can I trust who's the sender that sent to me? So in this example, um, the signature actually mentioned that, hey, I'm from Alice. I'm the one that signed this letter. So what happened is that, how do I trust you? Bob says, how do I trust you? Okay, so Bob can then, again, earlier it was using the Alice private key. So now Bob uses Alice public key and to try to decrypt this digital signature. So the result after decrypt 
he will come up with the the hash uh, value okay now if this is really coming from a user a okay first of all the message can be decrypted and it's not from C okay if let's say a uh, hacker C tries to pretend using a using hacker C's private key to de to to encrypt and therefore in this case Bob uses uses a public key and therefore Bob cannot open up or cannot decipher uh, hackers see the digital signature okay then the whole process will stop here okay but let's assume that this message is really come from user a so so first of all after the message has been deciphered become a hash and again so what happens is that Bob will also run through using the content and run through the hash algorithm so example md5 okay and the result should come up with uh, a hash value now this hash value has to be the same as the hash value over here so if these two value matches so Bob can be assured that okay the message that you sent over I managed to decrypt and then based on the hash calculation yes it is actually comes from uh, Alice so, so this is actually to protect uh, both situation all right so let's look at the common encryption and decryption algorithm now so first of all we have something called the stream cipher and we have block cipher now stream cipher is actually uh, used to encrypt an information which is an ongoing network stream so for example for network traffic stream cipher would be a, a better choice uh, for example the uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi kind of uh, environment uh, actually Wi-Fi uses a lot of uh, stream uh, cipher algorithm and this is uh, one of the popular one is called the RC4 and then for block is actually good for uh, block transfer okay that means a packet by packet transfer and this is actually uh, we have DAS DES and we have the uh, uh, triple DAS okay uh, that stands for data encryption standards okay then we have the triple DAS we have AES and IDA and RC2 RC5 RC6 SM1 SM4 okay so these are actually the higher it goes the uh, more bits is used to do the encryption so it means a higher protection and it's actually slower to decrypt and encrypt okay so let's look like let's look at the uh, asymmetric cryptography algorithm okay so here we have a, a common three types of uh, asymmetric encryption uh, algorithm so the first let's talk about DH now DH actually stands for Diffie Hellman now this is actually was developed by two person one is called Dr. Uh, with you Diffie and also Dr. Martin Hellman in the in the mid 70s about somewhere in the 76 now this algorithm is not meant for encryption or this decryption it's an algorithm to enable two parties who are involved in communication to generate a shared secret key for exchanging information uh, the secret way okay so the next one is um, RSA now RSA stands for reversed Shamil and adamant and this is by three person Ron reversed Eddie Shamil and Len Elderman. So they release this uh, algorithm. We call, they call it the public key algorithm in the uh, in the seven in the late seventies. And this algorithm can be used to encrypt and also to sign the data. <coughs> so so this is a bit different compared to the previous uh, uh, Diffie uh, Hellman. Uh, as uh, as this one allows uh, for encryption and also to sign okay and the last one is called the DSA which is called digital signature algorithm so this is actually algorithm that was developed uh, by the United States uh, government for dig for digital signature so DSA digital signature algorithm can be used for signing data and cannot be used for encryption so uh, so just to give you some comparison 
So when DSA is used, the process of creating a digital signature is faster than validating it. But when RSA is used, the process of validating the digital signature is faster than creating it. Okay. So here are some basic idea of DSA, DH, RSA, and DSA. So next we talk about the hash algorithm. Now first of all, hash algorithm converts any input of any length into an output of a fixed length. Okay. So now convert any input of any length so example the, the data size or maybe the whole entire data size could be like as big as maybe one terabyte of information or it could be one megabyte of information and the output is actually a fixed length okay so different hash algorithm will have a different length of a size okay and also different algorithm um, so the, the algorithm here is actually a fixed uh, algorithm so which means no matter where you you, you apply the algorithm um, so you the, you will always get the same the same result you given the same content uh, with the same algorithm you will definitely get the same result okay so let's say for example if somebody from a side want to send something to B side and you want to ensure that the, the content is exactly how you sent out so you actually run to a hash algorithm for example using md5 SHA or maybe an nm3 and then you send it over to the your your receiver so once the receiver receives the receiver can actually run through the same algorithm and then to generate the value and this value should be the same as what uh, the sender mentioned okay so this is actually to ensure that the content has not been tampered okay during the, the process of a uh, trans transmission okay so we have a, a md5 message digest algorithm SHA secure hash algorithm and Cine mid middle 3 algorithm we come to the end of the uh, topic so let's look at the quiz okay question one which of the following items are symmetric cri cryptography algorithm so the answer here is C, uh, D, S, and D, A, S. Okay, question two. Which of the following algorithm is used by digital envelopes? Okay, and the so answer is symmetric cryptography and also the asymmetric cryptography. All right, so here's the summary of this topic. What are the differences between symmetric and asymmetric cryptography algorithms? We discuss about that. And we discuss the mechanism of digital envelopes. And what is the problem of the digital signature solved? Okay, so we did mention about what's the problem of digital envelopes. And then after that, we use a digital signature to solve the problem. And also, what are the common symmetric cryptography algorithms? We also spoke about some asymmetric crypto uh, cryptography algorithm and finally we spoke about the hash algorithm so all these few algorithm are very important in the in the world of encryption and decryption thank you